Internets, welcome back to another episode of the Premium Pete Show. Sitting down with a very good fella, a return guest, uh, Thurston Howell III. Yeah. There's a lot of names, man. I feel like we, we may have spoke about this back then, but we need to go back over to AKAs. Man. Oh, there's more AKAs since then. Okay. okay you get My me. latest one is Dong Chichajong. That's, <laughs> well, that's the project I just dropped, you know, like my Spanglish hip-hop style. So I'm the Dong Chichajong. Slobber ranks. Okay. The skillionaire. The uh, low life the, general. Low life general. Skillosopher. Mm. The Polo Rican. Mm. Uh, Mr. Mahone. I like, Polo Rican is one of the most classic. I remember those yeah. hearing, hearing that years ago. You know, uh, it's good to see you again, man. Thank you, man. Likewise. You, you, you know, back then when we had you on, it's funny because I was just telling you off air that it made its waves around because we spoke about so many different things that you have done, you yeah. know, battling people in elevators, mm-hmm. Busta Rhymes, Jay-Z, Coolio, uh, Coolio and, mm-hmm. and all these things. And, and and it's funny, too, because I've always known of you through, you know, polo and, 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 and music. But then, like, I, at that time, I was like, damn, we learned a lot more about Thurston. Yeah. You know, and, and, and you, you know, continue to tell your story, continue to let people know what you got going on. More importantly, I think, like, a couple of months later, a picture shows up on the internet of you and Jay Z, and you yeah. throwing the you know the double uh, the double L up, man, the low life, and and it's funny because as I was talking to you, I was like, okay, that shit is, is dope to see because you haven't seen each other yeah. in a long time. Yeah, but then you know, there's always more to a story of like how it happened or how it came up. And I remember you were saying something like uh, that was like kind of like an invite. Explain to the internet. Yeah, who nah, we know. we had a meeting set up. You know, um. A lot of people been interested in my life story at this point and things like that and Jay and their company as well. So, you know, they hit me up to come have a sit down while they was in Miami. So, you know, I went and sat with him and Beyonce. Beyonce actually took the photo. Wow. You know what I mean? With my phone. So it was crazy. But <laughs> when I was throwing the L, I told Jay to match the L with me. And he was like, I don't do gang signs, man. He said, but you could do it. You do it. I'm not going to do it. I was like, that's wild. But, you know, we talked about a couple of things from the past, you know, when I've approached them and things. And, and you know, just laughed. If you see, there was another photo that we're just laughing real hard in the photo, like, you know, on some you crazy stuff, you know, my approach to people before. So, you know, I, I what, I'm, what I want to do is let people know, you know, there's a there's a page out there. Ain't no jigger. Uh, I mean, it's really considered so many things. You know, they say it's the big homie of Jay Z fan pages. Um, I don't know who's behind it. I know some people keep on trying to figure it out. I don't know. Maybe, maybe there's certain people who knows. But anyway, they always cover a lot of things on Hove. And I remember I seen that shit. Somebody had popped up where you were doing the, you know, the throwing up the two L's with, with Hove. And I'm gonna read this. I'm gonna read this for people who know. Uh, it says, and this is by again, shouts to ain't no jigger. It says Decepticons. Low life, snatch the pole off your or chest. East New York, Bushwick, fuck it. You know, you know what it is, obviously, these that's, lines. Those are his lyrics yeah, from yep. a song. Yep. Fuck it. The whole BK. What's up, AK? Right. The, the, whole, the whole BK. Uh, but let's go down more. It says, the skillionaire, which is you, once worked as a production assistant at MTV and went on to be a writer and cast member for the network's Lyricist Lounge Show. When it launched in 2000, working as a PA meant he had the inside scoop on who was coming to Times Square building and would organize his shift so he could meet and challenge the rappers to battle. Into, so that's funny alone, you know what I mean? And then, and, and again, internets who will listen to this, I'm giving you a briefing of how this photo even came. So for those, you know, who are listening now, you know, this is the re- return of Thurston. You know, we, we did an episode about uh, in 2017 where we really broke down your journey, your career, your your you know, but there are, you know, there's always is always moving parts, and you're still doing. There's so many things you you know you have done since then, and albums and projects have dropped and things. So we're gonna get to that. Yeah. But with Ain't No Jigger, what they wrote is in 2017, he told Premium Pete that Jay would come to many MTV events. I would always step to him and say, "What's up? Let's battle." He'd be like, "Ah, eh, you ain't got nothing for me, man." I stepped to Jay at least two, three times. So when I made my first demo, I ran up in every record label. And one day I ran up in Rockefeller in like 96, 97. And this is, th- this is coming from when we did the episode, th- their uh, quote in Thurston. So when I went in, Jay was there. He took my package, talked to me for a little while, and walked me to the elevator while I was leaving. 
when he walked me out, I didn't ask him about it because he had already turned me down. I just spit, I just spit at him so he could come, you know, come back. So he got on the elevator with me, and we were going back and forth. And Jay got busy. The Puerto Rican is the co-founder of Brooklyn's Low Life Movement, which he and George Rack Low Billups founded in Brooklyn 30 years ago in 1988. Residents of the Crown Heights and Brownsville neighborhoods of Brooklyn united through a singular passion, boosting Polo Ralph Lauren. Now we don't need to go anymore, but anyway. Yeah. It, it, it's there's a lot to your life, but it's funny how we're realizing that that picture was taken by Beyonce. Yeah. More importantly, they wanted to, you know, you've had an interest in Journey, which is still mm-hmm. going on, and they're talking to you about anything. So, have anything prospered since then, or are you still just talking? I mean, many things have prospered, you know, not 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 many things I could elaborate on, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. a lot happened, man. You know, yeah. um. You know, Beyonce said she loved my book for one. Okay. You know, so that was a beautiful thing. It showed, you know, they was in tune with everything I've been doing and stuff. And just, you know, my contributions to hip hop is, you know, through fashion and skill and all that. So even Jay acknowledged, man. So it was a beautiful thing just being in, in that position at that moment. Because, you know, I do see Jay as the GOAT just because of all Absolutely. his accomplishments and all he's done. You know, come on. He, he became a billionaire man, yeah. through rap. Yeah. like. You know, I have so much respect for all he's done. So just being acknowledged, whether something happened or not, I'm cool. I'm content. The fact that he could, you know, remember me and say my name. You know? mm-hmm. that's Absolutely. Enough. And that's and that's special. That, 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 that's that's what making a mark is about, to be honest with you. Yeah, where you can move and groove and people know who the fuck you are and what you have, uh, you know, contributed to. Yeah. To this, to this thing of ours. Now I'm a major contributor to the culture. Absolutely. Well, you've forward. always been. Let me, let, let me rephrase that. Just because certain people in that big statue, and we'll get to it even, you know, with with, with Ralph Lauren and all this, you've always been uh, a big, uh, you know, uh, contributor to the culture. Wow. Um, streetwear sense, boosting sense, real sense, G shit. Uh, and then also showing people how to make a, 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 a you know, keep it, it may be slow money, but it's for sure money. Mm-hmm. Where it's like you could come from the street and be fresh, but also be a businessman. You know, I, before we even get to the Ralph thing, I want to even talk about, it's funny, when Jay said, when he threw up the L's with two L's, and he's like, I don't do gang signs. Nah, he said, I don't throw up gang signs. Did you explain to him? I, you know, <laughs> I mean, you know, you know, something I do a lot, you know, all low lives do, you know, there's so many people who respect and love low life that they will, when you throw up one L, you know, we got a, a motto, Connect, yeah. one L means nothing without the other. So with so many people, they would match the L with you. You know, out of love and respect. Like, shit, last night I got Kevin Garnett to throw up an L with me. <laughs> you know what I mean? That was crazy. So, but everybody from, you know, Raekwon, Brother J from the X Clan, you know, Hurricane G, mm. everybody down to Will Smith have mm. thrown the L's up. You know what I mean? So it's, it's, it's big, you know. So I asked, I inquired. So, you know, just out of the love. But I also respected, you know, his decision of not to do it. But, to t- encourage me to still do it, you know? Sure. So that was big, man. Sure. I think uh, sometimes when people, you know, may not know all the uh, inner workings of something in that quick moment, it's probably easier for him to just be like, yo. But I know. mean, Jay knows what low life is. I yeah. mean, like, like you've seen, they recited his lyrics. No, Speaking of course, of, of low course. Life, he's mentioned it in his book. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, he's always spoken of his awareness of the whole low life thing. He's from Brooklyn, so yeah, it had you to know, be. it's it's influenced everybody at some point, you know. Everybody who's walked through the Brooklyn streets seen these dudes coming through super fly from head to toe, you know? You know, for people listening who know you, I want them to learn a little bit more about you. And for people listening who never heard of you, I want them to know about you. You know, again I told you, go back and check in twenty seventeen we did an episode that really covered. But I want to do, this is the return, like I was saying, of Thurston Howe, the third. More importantly, um, he, man, something I'm so proud to see is when the internet seen a picture of somebody who has really embraced polo, not as a not as a hoodie, not as a t-shirt, you know, not as a short, but as a lifestyle. As a religion. Yeah. Mm, That's mm, the way I mm, phrase mm. it. Because, you know, church, we made polo the only brand to be worshipped mm. religiously. Polo doesn't go out of style because of what low life done. Polo is the official uniform of hip hop. Mm. Everybody in hip hop wears polo to the extreme, almost not wearing nothing else, you know? And it's 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 been really contagious. 
you know, in the last couple of years to where it's dominating everybody in hip hop. Everybody's rocking the low as hard as possible. I mean, think about it. You're, you're over here repping it 25, I don't know, maybe 30, 35, 30, 35 yeah. years ago. And let's think about, I mean, it's more than this, but I just want to give an example. Even Two Chains on a record recently, a couple of years ago, where he's mentioning they got horsepower. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? referring to ralph you know what i mean referring yeah. to polo you know and so many i, I, I even wish... made a whole documentary called horsepower mm. complex oh, that's right complex made that yeah shouts so to know. uh i think uh chris sanchez was involved mm-hmm. on a couple other people but i, I like I, m- I remember i went to the screening in that yeah, they had so, just blaze know, in there yeah they, they had, had... Saw rack low yep, you, myself yep, yep. you know we were featured they had raekwon raekwon you know raekwon is always intertwined within the low culture he's even in my book you know, mm. the Bury Me With The Low On. Mm. Mm. Which so, is a classic know, book. So, you know, to, in, in my eyes, Raekwon always been an honorary low life because oh, yeah. he always repped the culture of it and the way he did it. You and know? he's so, a passionate person, too. Yeah, he's all about that low, you yeah. know? He's about you know, getting fly. <laughs> you know, one thing, you know, it, you know, it's funny when people talk about something, but people actually are something. You know, when you say you all about getting fly, think about it, you know? This is the type of dude that been rocking like Wallabies, or Diodoro, yeah. when people, and nothing against people who rock Yeezys, you know, if you like Yeezy or anything, but I'm saying, if you're staying on what's only hot at the moment, these yeah, dudes, you trendy, man. You're following the trends. you not, not not creating them, yeah. you know what I mean? You got to set the flow, man, you know? Now, Raekwon is good people, man. You know, it's good. Uh, Raekwon, I can honestly say, like, you know, in, in hip-hop, you hear everybody rap about, yeah, my Gucci moccasins this, my Gucci moccasins that. Raekwon was only the, one of the few I really saw rocking the Gucci moccasins. Mm. You know, just like myself, I've spoken of the Gucci moccasins from 86 <laughs> and all that. But I showed you the Gucci moccasins. you seen the flicks of me in 86 wearing the Gucci moccasins. I was able to pull them out and show them to you to this day. You know, that's a big difference than mm. just talking about it on a song. And Ray was somebody who manifested it and showed and proved on how you do the Gucci moccasins, you know? Mm. Shout, sh- shout to the one and only the God, Raekwon. Yeah, Ray, we, we need a song, man. We need a Gucci Moccasin song, me and you. We overdue. You know what's even special, too? And you alluded to this uh, as we were off air. Growing up being a sneaker lover, a Brooklyn kid, you know, I, I'll never forget. I remember Bum B told me this, but that Pimp C, and rest in peace, when he told them, like, yo, if we get Jordans, like, if, 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 we, if they send us Jordans, like, we made it. Mm-hmm. And... In his mind, that's what he felt like. Yo, growing up, you know, he loved Jordans, and for them to send you a package, mm-hmm. he felt like, oh, that was an honor. Now we sitting here talking about Polo, yeah, and how, and you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but Polo has, uh, you know, put put a bunch of pieces your way, and 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 blessed you. Yeah, Polo blesses me. Now. Yeah, you know, they but show I, me a lot of love. That, that's a look, man. Now nah, that, that's that was a beautiful major. thing. You know, after the premiere of the. Ralph Lauren documentary, Very Ralph. Ralph actually wrote me a letter and sent me a big plant to my home, you know? Mm. And I'm I'm in, I'm in shock answering the door, getting the plant. I'm like, who the hell sent this? And then the lady's like, read the card. And there was a letter from Ralph mm. where he thanked me, you know, for being in the documentary and how important he knew it was to me, you know, to have my legacy and the low life legacy attached to him and the brand within that movie so Mm. you know i really appreciated that man and it meant a lot to all of us you know just to be acknowledged in such a way but for him to even take out the time and to say thank you you know it just it said a lot about you know who he is and him him acknowledging where he came from because we all came from the same place basically Mm. and the struggle you know listen the struggle is real man the struggle built what it is today you know i'm proud to hear that you know and see that because sometimes these brands I mean, we you know we see it sometimes. With these brands, yeah, they'll uh, milk us. They'll milk yeah. us to death, man. They don't want. They won't care. But you, you get know? free stuff, and sometimes they send you the wax stuff. You know, rest in peace to uh, my brother. And uh, you know, I know you got a lot of love for Sean Price. You oh, know, nah, that's my brother, man. Yo, you let me tell know. you a quick story about Sean Price, real quick. He was uh, he was hit me. He's like, yo, I want to get some felines, and I'm like, all right, I'm gonna hook you up with the dude that's over there. At the time, I knew the person that was over there. He said, yo, but I want these Grand Hills and this. And I'm like, yo, I'm going to tell me your size. I'm going to mm-hmm. connect you with them. And whatever they send you, they send you, you know, but you'll get all the different releases. Yo, he hit me. He's like, yo, for you, I send me a package. I'm like, yeah. all right, man. Good, you know. It's like, 
I sent it back to them. <laughs> and I'm, I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? He's like, yo, they sent me some whack shit. I'm like, bro, give it to your kid. They're going to yeah. send you the stuff, but sometimes, you know. And <laughs> it was crazy because even Fila <laughs> send me packages now, too. <laughs> so you you wanted to see them, man. But Lo, let's be real. Lo, especially after everything you've been through and stood for and stand for. You know, we spoke about polo being a religion. Mm-hmm. There's people, like you said, hip, you know, hip hop is not just music. It's the way we walk, the way we talk, the way we dress. Polo is is is, is a tremendous piece of that puzzle. Yeah. It's part. It's the uniform. It's been mentioned in tremendous amount of songs. It's been worn in tremendous amount of videos. Not just mentioned. If you look at today's mm. generation, you will find at least. 50 to 100 songs about polo. Mm. Everybody has a polo song now where the entire concept is about wearing polo. Mm. You know what I mean? So that goes way beyond mention at this point. Yep, I know you're right on that. Let's take it to something that's really special and continue on that. So the internet see a picture of Thurston, okay, who's been a, a like low-life religion, low-life general. and the one and only Ralphie Lifshitz, a.k.a. Ralph Lauren. And I remember you telling me that, you know, you went there, you know, on a professional note, you know what I mean? Like, take us through that night. Take us through that maybe that week. Did they reach out? Did they, you know? Oh, yeah. I mean, they reached out weeks in advance, letting me know about the premiere and all that, you know, and I'm I'm, I'm out in, in, in Florida and things like that. Like, you know, am I going to go to the premiere? I don't, I don't know what to expect. You know, my wife is like, you better go to that. I don't know what you're thinking. I'm like, yo, I'm busy. I'm doing a bunch of work. She said, you better go. So, you know, I consulted with my rep who told me how I better come up in there. Like, when we coming up in there all low down, like, you know, you you standing on the corner, like right? You got to come in there repping right. But they also requested, you know, dinner attire. So, you know, so I had to come special with the Ralphie suit, the Ralphie the tie. Label. And Purple all label. that, you know what I mean? Nah, I just did the Ralph Ren, whatever fitted properly in the look, okay. threw on the gangster hat with it. And, you know, I came in there professionally, man, looking like, you know, like I got a lyric that I always say, um, I'm the I'm the polo model before Tyson Beckford, <laughs> ghetto glory shorty, this some life and death shit, you know what I mean? So I've always been the polo model, even before Tyson became who he was, you know what I mean? So... The world looked at me like that. The funny thing is, I took a picture with David Loren, Ralph Loren's yeah. son that night. Like, you know, we had a nice conversation and everything. And when the picture got posted, you know, I seen the comments that people were putting up. And somebody put, like, look at Ralph, both of Ralph Loren's sons and things like that, you know, to acknowledge me the way they do, associated with the family, you know? So... That was special, man, just to be seen in that light like that, mm, you know? Mm. What were they serving uh, that night? Oh, champagne, that, that shrimp cocktail, shrimp's about this big. <laughs> you know, it was crazy, man. And oh, I, I, I believe I was the only hip-hop artist in attendance, you mm. know, besides my besides my longtime friend Bones Malone, Cole mm. Rodriguez, mm. you know. But there were no other hip-hop artists in the building, man. So that was also special, you know, I... I mean, besides myself, Kanye was in the film and a brief shot of Raekwon and Ghost and things like that. But, you know, being in the HBO doc, they basically gave me my own segment inside of his life story speaking about low life. And that was that was pretty big, man, because they played my music. I'm drinking a 40 in the fucking film clips and, you know, I'm cursing in my music and. This is Ralph Lauren's life story. They, you know, playing this within. So that was crazy because they acknowledged me as far as who I was instead of trying to make me into what I needed to mold it to be looking like. You know what I mean? Mm, mm. And that's special. That's special. You didn't have to. You, know? you didn't have to change. Well, I mean, not that you would, but they appreciated yeah, yeah. who I am, mm. and I, I guess that's what they wanted to show exactly. Because you know that part, that segment of the movie was basically saying that, you know how they thought it was made for just the preppy kids and, you know, the kids from Yale and Harvard, mm-hmm. but it wasn't the case. And then they went into our story. You know, it was it was the urban took it and made sure. it their own and hip hop embraced it and it became that uniform. You know, one of the things that low life does or, you know, just a, a polo connoisseur is wear a lot of pieces. 
How many is the most pieces you ever wore? And internet's for internet's listener who may not know. In a night, yeah, in a day, yeah. I don't know, man. Like, or, or at I one time, have, like you know. I, I know I, I would have on two pairs of socks as always. I would usually have on the underwears with shorts under on top of the pants, the t-shirt, maybe a tank top under that with a shirt, then the sweater, then the vest, then the jacket, then the hat, maybe a sock on the head before you know what I mean, like. We were flood the low, man. The the whole purpose was to exaggerate it too. Like, even back in the days, I go to the club, I wear five shirts, and I would just change shirts all night. A lot of us did that. You know, just, just to even compete against each other. We sure, would, sure. We would change our shirts all night, switch shirts while I'm walking around. So, you know, I'm not the same person you saw, you know, but we flood the low, man. Mm-hmm. Now, what would you say is is I think you mentioned this before, but for people who may not know, what what would you say is, it's not only one, but a couple of some of the most prestigious pieces of polo Ralph Lauren, whether that be a jacket, a hoodie, you know, a- anything that you think, a couple I mean, of them. I mean, the, the, what I explain to everybody, because you know, so many people are caught up on the vintage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, Which is the same shit in sneakers. Yeah, but I was dead, man, so yeah. I really don't yeah. care for nothing. The new shit be impressing me. You know, I be hyped up for the new stuff. How like look, look at all this retro lines that that are coming out from Polo, the recreations. Like, okay, he brought back the snow beach, but then he bought the new black and white yeah, snow beach. White, like yeah. that's the kind of shit that impresses me to see the new pieces that are going. I like my low to be crispy, brand new. I don't like old faded, you know. For me it's about being crisp. So but there, there are many pieces, man. I think it's to each his own. Everybody has their favorites, you know. Me, I want that new shit, you know, all the time. So you could keep all the other pieces, man. And my, as far as the the stuff I crave the most is the stuff for your home, because mm. you'd be shocked what they make. Chandeliers. For your house. I don't know about going that far, Yo, man. Yo, just Blaze. Uh, I think he ordered a chandelier yeah. or some skulls. Yeah, some he's skull. crazy. He's crazy some- with it. <laughs> <laughs> I think you know it's it's funny too because when you think about low lives and internet, don't ever get it twisted. We don't mean a low life like uh, uh for people listening who may not understand uh, this journey and is learning. We talk about low lives in the sense of polo, low heads, just like sneaker heads. Mm-hmm. Uh, people who believe in 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 this, like he's been explaining. Um, you know, it's funny when you mentioned that about vintage pieces. I think that was a lot of ways in sneakers where people were like, oh, I only wear OGs. You know, dog, we 30 years, 35 years in, you like 300 pounds, you put on a pair of those uh, sneakers, you're going to blow them out in one second. Mm-hmm. People can't even really wear OGs anymore. Try and wear 85 Jordan 1. It ain't, it, 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 you know, it's crazy. I've never been a Jordan head either, yeah, man. Yeah. What, were, what were you wearing uh, with the uh, polo back then? Like in the early, early days? The Gucci sneakers, mm-hmm. the polo sneakers, the ones that look like Stan Smith's. You know what I mean? I never was a Jordan head, man. I never cared for that because it's what everybody was doing. It's what, you know, it was like I'm trying to do what yeah. you're not doing. Yeah. You know, I'm, I was in, excuse me, I was into like the high top Gucci's in red, mm. high top Gucci's in green, the white. Tim's. You know, Tim's is like yeah. unspoken of, yeah. man. You know, the Tim's moccasin boots and you know, spot built. I, spot builds was hard body. You know, I I, I definitely got Feel a like- thousand pictures in. Fila was before Polo yeah. for all of us, you know. Mm-hmm. Fila actually came in and dominated the streets before Polo had access all the way. You know what I mean? Especially that was a big Brooklyn thing. Even for the dudes in Bensonhurst and the, yep. like the Italian kids from Brooklyn went yep. hard with yep. the Fila suits, you know. So that was big for me too. The Velours and, you know, Fila definitely played a big role, man. But oh. a, a, But everything started... With that motherfucking suede pumas and them shell toe Adidas, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. but that wasn't the beginning of the hip hop shoe. It was that pro cad, yeah, the pro cad, then that yep, converse, yep, yep. then the night Cortez. Yep. But the dominant Air shoe Force was One. the don. I wasn't an Air Force One dude either. To yeah. me, that shoe was eh, it was basic in my yeah. eyes. It, it crumbled up once you yep, wore it the yep. first time. I like my shit crispy, but that shell toe and that suede puma. They were the kings of New York, yeah. for those mm-hmm. people who don't know. Like, you're looking at that shoe now, like, it's retro. But also, like I said, I lived those times, so I'm not fascinated by those things. I, I look at me wearing shell toes now, like, 
a costume. You know, I see dudes with Dita suits and the Kango and Gazelle. It looks like a costume sure, now. Sure. You know what I mean? It doesn't look authentic like it looked before. Like, you know, the gangsters was wearing that in the 70s and 80s and all that. People who put it on together, it looks like a fucking Halloween costume now Mm. on a lot of them, you know? So none of that impresses me, man. I want the new shit. I want my style to keep evolving and keep being fresh, you know, up to date. New tags popping. You know, when people look at Thurston and, and, you know, they see that he's being acknowledged He's, he's in the movie, uh, the documentary for Ralph Lauren. He is, uh, uh, Jay-Z is, you know, inquiring within about some, uh, you know, his story, whatever it is. There, sometimes, because, you know, sometimes people don't get acknowledged. And I'm sure throughout your career, there was times where maybe some of these people, correct me if I'm wrong, but some of these people maybe didn't acknowledge you. Well, very much. And, but you're still here. And you lasted through it. You didn't. You didn't burn no bridges to the point where like people don't want to even fuck with you, which some people do that shit. They're like, fuck yeah. them. They don't fuck with me. Now, you know what a lot of people always ask me? Like, you know, my journey been long. I've been independent this entire time. I never had a record deal, things like that. And they, you know, everybody was like, why you never gave up? And I said, because I never got my shot. And if I was able to do this much for myself, imagine if I get a shot. Mm. It's not going to fail. So I'm not going nowhere until I get it all the way and I'm able to leave that legacy and mark for everything I'm I'm about and everything I do. You know, and now it's it's starting to come to life. You know what I mean? The acknowledgement is being there. I'm not I've never been bitter, never been mad that people are not you know, I go places where they don't know who I am. I don't want to push myself on them. You know, cool. I respect it, you know. I wait my turn. I've always been that kind of do. I wait my turn, you know. I've started with a lot of great artists and seen them make it to the top. And I still remained at the same level, never bitter at anyone. You know, happy to see everybody else's success because I know my turn will come. Mm. Regardless, because I'm in it to win it. I'm not going nowhere. I'm being consistent. I'm doing the work. I'm following up. I'm doing everything you're supposed to do to be established in that light, mm. you know. You know, one thing I love about people who really embody the polo lifestyle is how they envision themselves to be what some of these pieces are. And I think somebody who is very powerful in explaining that is Dallas Penn. Mm -hmm. I remember when he had this, uh, you know how Paul makes that yacht, the the yacht, the the sailing type shit. He had this yellow jacket. The Thurston uh, Howell attire, basically. Yo, and he, and he, 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 one thing I've always loved is how he would explain, like, yo, this gear makes me feel like, you know, I'm, I'm on a boat mm-hmm. and, 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 and we're sailing. You know what I mean? And I think those are things that people don't like. It's more, it's always been, that's what it's like, like meaning like it's hip hop is bigger than music. Yeah. You know what I mean? It, it, it just like, just like pole is bigger than a hoodie. It's not like yeah. some people may, and, and granted, some people may look at it as it just being a hoodie yeah, or a T, but it, 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 like you said, it's a religion. It's religion to a lot of people. They worship it religiously. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy you said that because, you know, I'm a dude who hates sports. I don't like sports, man. You can't come to my house, turn on the game, none of that <laughs> shit. I don't play that. You know what I mean? But if you, if you, if you witness my life, I dress for tennis. I dress for golf. I dress like an athlete as much the as you know. Then you then you have all that uh, when Paul had that Olympics. Not just polo, the feline, yeah. all of that. You yeah. know, the Olympic line. You know, I've never played a sport in my life, man. I've like I've been anti sports, man. No, but, but why is that? I'm just for people who. Listen. I mean, I I was about the women, man. So yeah. I wasn't about the sports. You know, growing up and things like that. So. The Polo Rican was out here. Yeah, but Understand. I, never, I never was with the sports. You ain't never seen me on the handball court or on the basketball. Like, I go with my friends, everybody going on basketball court. I'm talking to the girls sitting on the side. You know, dudes come to my house. Yo, put on the game. You got to get the fuck out, nigga. Ain't no game going on in here. <laughs> Don't play that shit. Football, none of that shit. So it's just, it's just been my persona. And I've always been extremely deep into hip-hop. Mm-hmm. So... The music is on 24-7 when you come in my crib. So nobody's, you're not going to hear the game if you got it on because I'm going to blast the music. I'm going to sleep with the music on and things like that. So 
I've always dedicated my entire life. Like breakdancing was my sport. Mm -hmm. Graffiti was my sport. Mm -hmm. These are the things I was passionate about, you know? You know, you, you had a studio in your house throughout the times? Uh, living in Miami or living in Florida? You're not a real artist if you don't got your own tools in your own lab, you know what I mean? Take us through, you're in the studio, right? After 30 years, you know, what would you tell people who are listening now that may may just be hearing you for the first time? Like, you know, because from what I see, I feel like you always spit your journey, man. You spit, like, what you believe in, you know, like, real-life experiences. And, and the crazy thing is, you know, me beginning as an artist, I did a lot of comedy. Yeah. And, you know, people would look at me and be like, you know, you don't look funny. Yeah, <laughs> you, know you were mean? serious. But all my music was comedy in the beginning because I felt like, me rapping about my real life wasn't skillful. Mm. I wanted to be creative. I wanted to be like Dana Dane. Mm. I wanted to be like Jimmy Spicer. I wanted to use my imagination within the music. And that's what just came naturally for me. I wanted to transform my voice and, you know, turn into Thurston. Now I'm accustomed to abiding by a freestyle, penal code. Like use styles and proper English and things like that because... It was outside of who I was, and that to me was skills. That mm. was skillful, you know. But I would tell any artist, man, you're never gonna be your a artist to your true potential if you don't have your hands on it yourself. Like if you're not having a studio in your crib, you're a part time artist, you know, because you need to constantly practice you need to constantly record to get it the way you want it like these things will develop you you know i mean i when when i first started making music i went to make it or break it up studios in harlem and all that right to record my first time paying for a studio session soon as i left that session and i'm on driving home listening to the song i wanted to change 20 things <laughs> so i came back the next day changed those 20 things and left listening to it again going home I wanted to change 20 more things. That's when I knew I couldn't be going back and forth in the studio. That same week, I went and I bought me a four track. So I took the four track home with my turntable, my mic, and I just started developing my styles and changing whatever I wanted to on the spot and things like that. So that all evolved into me having a full studio. Because the more I bought, uh, you know, piece by piece, mm -hmm. the more I began to learn and things like that. You know, I learned how to work the equipment. I learned what a piece I needed next, what made this sound better and things like that. So it helped develop me as an artist to master the sure. craft. You know, you I'm trying to be a master. You know what I mean? Yeah. You became a student and a teacher. Yeah. You already know. You know what? Let's take a quick break. We're sitting here with the return guest, return friend. Yeah, the return uh, of the Polo Rican. Yes, sir. The Skillionaire. Internet's don't go nowhere. We'll be right back. Yeah. Cheer. Internet's and we're back. Sitting here with my guy, the Polo Rican. Yeah. Thurston Howard the third. Listen, uh, early in the, this episode, you spoke about Will Smith threw up the L, the low life. Yeah. Where, where, where did that happen? Uh, it happened with with another member of Low Life who used to work and forgive me for forgetting his name you know but he worked on a lot of music and stuff with will smith and oh, he helped write told, music yeah. and things and he posted mad pictures with will smith throwing the l's by himself like this boom you know real hard so that was amazing to see as well you know you know you're a real passionate dude but you're a real serious dude not many people can fuck with you and what I mean by that is, like, you know, like it's funny how you were saying comedy, rap, yeah, I'm, you know. I'm a, I'm a crazy, but you're, I'm a comedian. But you're, but you're a serious dude. People who don't know you may look at like, damn, man, this dude is uh, pretty serious. There's a lot of times, you, listen, you're oh, 30 years in. What has been some of your favorite moments of the journey? You know, obviously it's got to be Ralph and being in the documentary. I mean, there were many, man. But like, Nate, wow. the reason why I say that for is because sometimes... I don't know if this is a New York thing. Um, you know, being part of the Rap Olympics team mm. that Wendy Day put together mm. with Eminem. Mm. Mm. Shout out to Wendy know, Day. And M, you know, that was big for me. Being a part of the Lyricist Lounge show, you know, that was big for me. Um, you knew everybody that was coming up. Hanging there. out with Dana Dane, you know, who I, mm. who was, I was a big fan of Idol. And then for him to become my friend and record, make music with me, and, you know, to show me the same and love, respect as an artist. Same with AG, mm. you know, AG, um, Andre the Giant, you yeah. know, 
I remember when when I first was starting out, AG gave me a call one day, and he was like, "Hey, I'm gonna come visit you. I just want to school you to the things that you know you got to prepare yourself for in this game." And he came to Brownsville, and he hung out with me all day. You know, walked around <laughs> the projects. We, like we just hung, and we became good friends for that. Even to where I would go to Patterson Projects and hang out with him and his whole team and party yardy and bless it. And we would rhyme for hours and hours, you know? So things like that, man. Like the people who used to come to my crib just to rhyme. Like the Sons of Man to stop by my house and we rhyming for hours, you know? Old Dirty would come by the house, rhyme, you know? So moments like that, man, was special to me. I mean, there's so many of us, man, just working at MTV all those years, you know, really enlightened me and, and taught me so much. It kept me out the street. It kept me out of trouble. You know, I got the job uh, on, on when I was on work release and things like that. And I was coming home from jail and I still had beef in the streets and people were still coming to look for me. And they knew I was home and things like that. But I'm working 16 hour shifts and all that to where you never seeing me. So to the world, I was basically disappearing. So that job helped really change and mold my life, man. But, I mean, the journey been beautiful, man, to, to even, you know, getting the unsigned hype, you know, shit like that. Like, you know, all these things that meant something big at the time. Like, you know, getting an unsigned hype in the source was, sure. was, was tremendous. tremendous yeah. And, you know, when the unsigned hype came out, I was on Rikers Island. Mm. So now I had to battle everybody in the bathroom and things like, yo, the dude from Unsigned Hype is in here. All right, what's up? He's in I'll C74. Be in the bathroom. He's in so, 5 you know, North. It, it, it was real crazy with all that, man. But I think the the biggest thing, man, is just I, I can honestly say I've never loved anything more than hip hop. Mm. And to actually come into hip hop and and be able to establish a legacy is probably could have been my biggest dream or you know, biggest goal I would have ever had in my life. Because when I started, I never wanted money. I, I just wanted people to respect me and know that I'm nice and I got skills. And, you know, that was my main goal, to just be acknowledged for my skill. Man. Mm. So, but to get this far, I could have never imagined in a million years. That was just gravy on top. I could have never imagined this, man. You know, you're a confident dude and you used to battle everyone. Mm -hmm. You know, and as even though I'm not a battler, I'm thinking in my mind, somebody who's battling is very confident. You know, they're like, yo, I could battle anybody. I, I think about it, it's almost the same as, you know, I used to break dance too. <clears throat> I felt I could yeah. I could tear somebody up in a circle easy. I was waiting for them to be done so I could uh, do what I do. You know, do do 100 windmills, turn upside down, head mm -hmm. spin, whatever, you know, whatever. For me, rapping was a resurrection of mm. my breakdance days because breakdance was that for me. Mm. But it also comes from being a fighter. Mm. You know, when you when you a hood dude, it's about I fuck you up. It's a fight. You know, yeah, everything yeah, yeah. is about every answer is violence. So I'm confident in fighting. So when I approach you to battle, it was the same thing. Like, come here, I'm gonna fuck you up. You know what I mean? <laughs> come here, like, come on, you ain't going nowhere right now. Let's get busy. You know, even though you were confident, was there there were some people I'm sure that you're like, oh shit, they are good at battling. You know, I remember you battled uh uh who was he? Was it, was it Buster Rhymes? Yeah, I battled uh, Bus. Um I mean he's nasty. You know what I mean? Yeah, Bus Bus is uh, one of the greatest. Oh ever. my god. But you know, it like when I battled Bus that day, you know, after we pulled over, like I told you, we battled at a red light yeah, man, yeah, yeah, outside yeah, right, at right, a yep. club. So yep. <laughs> when we pulled over and battled for like an hour, he we exchanged numbers, and the next day he tried to take me to every label he could mm. to introduce me to people and show them what I, you know, that alone was felt good to me because he didn't just want to prove he was better than me. He was so impressed that he tried to get me on and help me out. You know what I mean? So I I, I love Bus Forever for that, mm. you know? I mean, I didn't get no deals. I remember he took me to Rick Posada up at uh, Electra, Okay. And he made me spit about... An hour long verse for Rick and things like that, you know? So that was beautiful, man. Those were beautiful moments in my life. I remember one day I went to to um to Staten Island, to Stapleton or whatever, just to go be in a killer army video. And I went out there damn near by myself and I'm posting up in front of these buildings like I live here. And everybody looking at me like, yo, who the fuck is this nigga? Like, this nigga just here chilling. So, and then out of nowhere, Capadonna pulls up. Mm. 
and Cap seen me. And at the time, we had just recently came out in a magazine together where we were both featured in it. And he saw me, and he told somebody to signal me, hey, that's Thurston, tell him to come here. So he called me over to the car, and he told me to take a ride with him. And, yo, I'll tell you no lie, man. That day I was, I was flat broke. I was shining. I was looking good. I was dipped, all that. But he drove me around, showed me around Staten Island, took me to a weed spot where all the Wu-Tang was in there hanging out and playing video games. He bought me weed, bought me Phillies, Dutchess. And then we went to the store. He bought me a hero. He bought me. And, yo, I never even told him that I was flat broke, that I didn't have a penny in my pocket. I never mentioned that. You know what I mean? So just that kind of love and acknowledgement, man, and, like, those were special moments in my life that I could reflect on and look back because, you know, I also loved and admired Capadonna's music and his style and everything. You know, I'm a Wu fan. You know what I mean? So, I mean, I could go on for days, man. There's probably a thousand of these stories, man. <laughs> you know? You got you got a tremendous amount of stories. You know, you had the, the and let me know, but I know you had the Low Life brand mm-hmm. uh, with, um, with Willie Esco. Willie Esco. Is, that, is that still going for people? Yeah, it's still okay. going on. It's, and, it's, and is it in stores or people could? I mean, uh, it's, it's, it's on the website alone right now, you know, lowlife.com, so you could check out. But there are new things coming in the work. There's some beanies up there now and things like that, but there should be a bunch of new things coming out. How has... Polo Love is uh, embrace low life, meaning like, you know, for me, I think it's a genius idea that what you did is, and no shots to Polo, but you created uh, some of the pieces that maybe you were inspired by or you would like to see. And you, to me, you extended your, your you know, your love for, for, for Polo. Uh, how has been the, you know, over the years? Because this is not recently new. This is a couple of years nah, now. Yeah, starting in 2015. Yeah. Yep. So, I mean... It's just, it's back to the flyness, man. It's just elaborating and bringing it on. But, you know, at the end of the day, it, it all was inspired from Ralph Lauren and Polo. So Ralph, he lived shits. Yeah, it was just our way of trying to bring back what he didn't have anymore, which now he brought everything back. You know what I mean? So now we, we didn't have to do it because he bringing it back. So, you know, we trying to move with more original designs at this point, you know, but. Ralph retro line right now is crazy. You know, I think our book had a big a big involvement in structuring, restructuring their company and the things they're releasing just by them seeing our book, you know, the way it is religiously, the garments, the way they're worn, the pieces we chose, you know. I believe even they did, uh, they studied the statistics of what was being stolen in the stores. Mm, the boosting days. Yeah, to know what pieces to actually you know, Free focus on, on yeah. more and, and to create more of because the demand, you know, it's like if you're not being bootlegged, you're not really in demand. So I even noticed that the Ralph Lauren company, anytime people bootlegged or try to make some fake polo of theirs, they would take that same exact bootleg and make it themselves mm. to stop you in your tracks, man. And to me, that was genius, you know, but I always respected that them about them because when you try to take it, they took it back, you know. Mm. You ever take a moment to realize, you know, um, for me, I, I try to do this, but you were in Rikers, man, and uh, young, younger days, there was some troubled times, like myself. Mm-hmm. Uh, Could have went all the way left. Could have went really all the way left. You came home, changed your whole life around. It took several times, though. No, I know, I know it that. Took, yeah, it took, it took you know, I, I just faced a lot of severe consequences. And I mean, by my third time being convicted, felony convictions, you know, I started being convicted by 16 and things, but I really didn't know no better. You know, I'm just trying to survive and things like that. But by my last conviction, man, by 21, you know, I had a lot of severe charges and all that, and I got another chance, man. And I had to acknowledge that, you know, and I know I knew I wouldn't get that chance again. And just, you know, even after doing my business stuff, being placed on work release, a place where I'm actually still doing my time in the street, I got hit at the parole board on work release with two more years. So I'm like, okay, I could do my time right now on the street or they'll send me back. But I had to walk a straight line. And and I was put in so many different programs that helped me walk that straight line, that taught me how to open my mind, that taught me decision making processes and things like that to become a better person, 
you know, and I, I'm grateful for all that, man, and all the people that stepped in. A lot of people stepped in to help me because they saw me trying to make a change, trying to do better. I never abandoned being a low life. I never abandoned my team. I never abandoned my project. I stayed being who I was, but I just made a transition, and I got a lot of people to transition with me at that mm. time. You know, one thing about you is you never forgot who was there for you, you know, who did things for you. You know, you're not too proud of like, nah, I don't need nobody. Oh, not at all. You know, we were speaking about Will Tell. That's my brother. And, uh, you know, him and Sadat X, <clears throat> I was telling you a story that years ago, uh, we did an episode with them with their wine. Mm -hmm. They got the True Connoisseur's wine, which is uh, really dope. If it's in if it's in wine stores, internet's True Connoisseur True wine. True Connoisseur wine. Make sure you check it. It's good. Listen, I remember, rest in peace, my brother Combat Jack. Shouts to A. King. Uh, I remember we did an episode. We drank like four bottles. I was fucking twisted. I don't remember what happened. I call it the fucked up factor. <laughs> you know, but you mentioned Will Tell, who is a producer, who is an entrepreneur. He's a uh, low life. He has well. a low life. You know, but the reason why I bring him up more, more importantly for us, and not that he doesn't know this, but I love moments that people get to hear this and never forget uh, that they were important in someone's life. Oh, uh, man. Will has been a great. A great assistant, everything going on in my life now. Like I, I've, I've had Will hold me down in some of my darkest moments, you know. Um, even to where, when you know, I got kicked out of my project once my mother died and things like that. So I was really heavy in pursuit of this music, man. And you know, there was times I had no place to turn, man. And Will's doors, when I met him, his doors were always open to me. Like I was sleeping on his couch. I was recording in his house for free every day. You know, um, he's giving me car fare to go home or come back. I, I remember him feeding me lobsters every day. You know, there was also, I was telling my boy Cole earlier that there was one Christmas where I was really down and out, man. And, you know, I'm staying in his house. I'm sleeping on the couch, things like that. And I remember him and and his wife and their daughters, and they went out that day. And I'm just in his house, and I'm down in the pits. And everybody returned with a whole bunch of gifts for me. Mm. And I'm like, wow, you know, like, they really brought up my spirit, but just to see people care. And they didn't really know me that well at the time. You know, they knew my ambition yeah, sure, and my sure. hunger. They, like, Will always knew my history because he was, he became a lowlife through, like, Bones Malone back in the days. But I've never met him until, like, the late 90s and things like that. But... Just the things he's always brought into into my life, you know what I mean? And the assists he's always get. Even, you know, I speak to Will Tell to this day on a regular basis, and I'll make sure I always let him know. You know, we still always work on music. We still always stay in communication. We still, you know, do whatever we got to do to keep pushing things forward, man. And that's somebody I'm forever grateful to, you know, because he helped Thurston be where Thurston is for the things he brought. You know, he produced... The Pana de Que, he mm. produced Old Gold Cypher, he produced um, Crime Lords with me and Sticky Fingers, he produced uh, The Joint with me and Prodigy, you know, the Skillmatic, like, we'll tell how the big hand in, in me being Thurston Howell and having that all that work and being consistent, so, you know, he knows, man, because I let it be known that I love him and that he's my brother, and I'm going to always be here for whatever he needs, mm, you know? Mm. Shouts to Will Tell, man. You know, uh, recently uh, you put out a project, okay, with uh, you and um, Sadat X, right? Yeah, The God and the General. Mm. It's a mixtape. You know, me and Sadat also, you know, got real close with this, with Sadat through Will Tell, you know? So they were working closely together a lot. So me and Sadat started working on a lot of music here. So we would record from time to time, and... I had so much music with us stacked up. I'm like, yo, we might as well throw out a project. So the God and the General came out. Uh, that was this year we dropped it in mm -hmm. the summer. And the first video was Eat These Bars, man. Crazy where Shannon Briggs, the boxer, is my trainer. And, you know, it's, it's real wild. But, you know, shout out to Sadat as well, man, because he also carries this low life culture to the extreme. He reps it in everything he does and everywhere he goes. You know, even more when he's with Brand Nubian. You know, every Brand Nubian picture you see, you see the L yep. high with yep. Sadat. So he's he's 
he's made the culture be impactful by being a part of it and carrying that flag, man. So I salute him forever for that too, because he helped make this culture global the way it is. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, you mentioned that your wife uh, was saying, like, you better go to, you know, this event. You better go. Yeah, I'm always working, man. I don't be wanting to do shit because I want to do more work. So exactly. something is interrupting my, nah, I'm not going though. I'm doing this <laughs> right now. Like, leave me alone. My wife like, you, but you crazy, boy. You better get out of here. How how has that been to, to really, you know, let your family see some of this, uh, you know, like your wife see what's going on now, like for them to experience these ups, because, you know, as we're speaking about this journey, there's a lot of downs, you know, and, you know, now there's a, you know, I'm, I mean, nothing's ever perfect, but there's a lot of, there's a lot of blessings and that's got to be special for them to really see these blessings and really, you know, see how happy it makes you as well. And really it changes a lot of their life because there's a lot of things on deck your journey obviously will be on a lot of things, you know, mm-hmm. like you spoke about uh, earlier in the beginning of the episode about Jay and, you know, them being interested in your story and stuff like that. Uh, if they don't do it, I'm sure it's going to be tremendous. You know what I mean? There's so yeah. many it's different things. Game. Yeah. But I mean, I'm very fortunate, man, because, you know, my wife, my children, everybody is a part of what I do. Like my wife has supported everything I do a hundred percent. There have been times I've spoke of giving up and th- and she'd be like, you stupid boy, you better go in that studio and make some more. You know, my wife has come to me and said, don't worry, if I have to, I'll pay all the bills. Mm. Just keep doing what you're doing. She's never, ever said a bad word because, I, you know, I hang with a lot of dudes in pursuit of this and to see what they go through in their relationships because they're neglecting people because of their pursuit and or their hunger for the passion of the music or the culture, and they go through it, man. I could honestly say I never went through that with her. You know what I mean? She's always on my side for this. She knows because she met me this way. And, you know, as far as my children, they're in everything, every video. My daughter's the makeup artist. My son is always the actor. You know, so they work the productions with me, all of them. So the fact that I keep them all involved, we do this as a family. So it's not like them watching my success. This is our success. Mm. They're a part of it. They indulge in it. You know what I mean? So I'm I'm grateful for that, man, because it, it makes it easier for me to be the fiend. Because I tell people it's like being a crackhead. I'm a crackhead when it comes to this. I don't know how to stop. I don't know how to leave it alone. Sometimes you, you got to get out my way, like leave me alone. I'll lock the door. I'll lock them out for days at a time to finish certain work. But they understand me. And they know that, you know, this is just my passion. This is my love. And they know they are part of this, man. So mm. it makes it special. Man. Mm. Amen, man. That's beautiful. That's a beautiful thing. That's what it's really about, man. You know, the family and really being able to have your blessings become their blessings as well. I, I remember seeing Jim Carrey's story, man, when, where he was homeless. Mm. And him and his family lived in a station wagon in Canada. And the whole time they were in the station wagon, I see. His mother, father, and his sisters, they all was in that station wagon writing his jokes mm. to help create him into who he is now. Now, you know, imagine their lives now, how they all look back at that moment and what they did to help their son be who he is today, one of the greatest comedians ever, you know what I mean? Mm, mm. And that what that story always inspired me. I always look at so many people's story who who it took them a long time to get to where they were going. I look at Benny Hill's story, you know, amazing stories, people who failed for 20 years and better, but then one day, bang, they dominate the world after 20 years of failure, but constant work ethic, consistency, nonstop throughout all the failures and get it at some point. Like I said earlier, I never quit because I never got a shot. And I know when I get my shot, it's not going to fail because I haven't failed yet doing it on my own. Mm. So I'm I'm destined and I'm lined up to get it, you know? Mm. Thurston Howe the third. You know, uh, as we wind this episode down, you know, one thing that stuck out to me is when we speak about, you know, you being in the Ralph, the, the HBO the, uh, documentary, Very Ralph. Um, we think about when you took that picture, obviously picture's a picture. You already were in the doc. It's a lot more than a picture. But when you took that picture, did you know 
that the internet was gonna really like not at all. You, but you had to think something that not this picture, at all. You know, sometimes like you have a picture like and you like get ready to put it out. You're like, oh, they're gonna love this one. Not at all, man. Because that I, I, had, I remember seeing. It, I remember it went seeing viral. It. Yeah, yeah, that was crazy. Yeah. I mean, I just I was basically showing a picture like you know I went to the premiere. Hey, I'm here with Ralph. Yeah, but that, come on, you know what I mean. They, 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 I know I, what you're saying. I did but, not expect that, man. But that's like you know, you it know is what? Full circle shift for you. because it, it wasn't just a full circle for me. The people told showed me how proud they was of the moment. They made me acknowledge how big the moment was. Because you know, I'm like, all right, I got to meet Ralph. I got to talk with Ralph. We we together. We're taking pictures. Me, him, his kids, his brother. The, but I think, excuse me. The internet was happier for me than I was for myself, because mm. they they powerful. they've seen, you know, me rep this brand all this time, your whole life, and then they like, wow, it's finally like I've seen people say I like, I've seen comments on the photo like people saying, I never thought I would be alive to see this moment. That's a person commenting like they're alive to witness that we actually standing there together now. You know what I mean? <laughs> That was crazy for me though, but I appreciate it, man. I even, I even posted about it, like you know, thank you. I was happy to see how happy everybody was for me. You know mm. what I mean? That, that sign, meant a lot. That's a sign that you loved. You know, twenty twenty. Uh, what, what what's in store, man? Oh man, I don't even know what's in store. I mean, it's a roller I, I coaster just, ride. Just yeah, but I just know up. I'm I'm consistent and I'm always planting seeds, man. So who knows what's gonna come about? Like musically, film wise, and all that, I'm I'm nonstop. So you know, I have music and films and stuff to cover me for the next four or five years without me having to keep working. Mm. You know, I work ahead of time like that, man. But I can't begin to tell you what's gonna happen or what might happen. I just know, you know. The stars are aligned. That's all I could say, man. As they always are. You know, when you think about uh, a lot of your journey and, and, and you look back and, and all the times you wanted to give up to, to where you are today, to to being in the dock, to to having the respect of, of, of people across the whole industry. You know, you, you think about moments like that are so special. You know, you spent a lot of time in Miami, right? Yeah. Uh, Orlando. What's some of the go to spots? Do you go out to eat a lot, in Miami? Is there uh, spots? I, that... I cook, man. I cook a lot. Really? Yeah, I like. You cook? I, I might. I make everything, but I, you know, I cook healthy, man. So I like eating at home. I'm always satisfied okay. with the food. I love. I love motherfucking turkey wings, man. Them gigantic smoked turkey wings. I'm making them every day, man. It's like what, it anything looks... on the side. Uh, sweet potatoes, okay. man. I'm always baking sweet potatoes and things like that. Asparagus. Asparagus as well But me I'm a soup lover So everywhere I travel Like especially in Miami I know The soup of the day Every restaurant <laughs> So I'll tell Even if I'm not there Like When when my my wife Will pick me up From the The airport or whatever I'll be like Make sure you stop At the spot Get this soup that day So when she picks me up I got my soup You know I like Mondongo soup mm. Sancocho you know, I love Spanish food, but even everywhere I go and I travel, I try soups that I never had before. You know, I love soup that much. Mm, the soup Nazi. Uh, anyone that you haven't, I mean, it's got to be people, but anyone you haven't collaborated with. That, oh, yeah. That, you know, that you. Massive put, people. Put, put some of them out I there, mean, man. I, I've never worked with Ghost yet. Okay. You know, I it's got to happen. I think that collab just on what we could come up with. Um. Uh, Trick Daddy, mm-hmm, you know, because mm-hmm. Trick Daddy is heavy with the polo. Um, I mean, it's a long list, man. I still haven't recorded with Ray. Mm. Like, from a fashion standpoint, I think we could really body some shit. I mean, I did songs with RZA that he still has in his possession that I would like some of those joints mm. when you get a chance. RZA, RZA run them shit. Yeah, I need them Please. pieces, man. Like, you know, they 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 old by now, too. But I mean, there's a lot of people, man, that I still want to work with. I'm I'm a fan of 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 so many people. Slick Rick, mm, you know, the um, legend. There's so many, man. Papoose. I like the super lyricals. You know, I've recorded with Cannabis already. I've recorded with, you know, one of my all time favorites, Brother Jay from the X Clan. You know, but there's a lot of people, man. I still want to work with. I would have to sit down and really put that list together. Well, some of them listen. We put it out in the light. Some of them, if they hear, you know, let's. 
Let's yeah, make let's it happen. Busy, man. And, let's and get con- busy. And continue the journey together. You know, battle rap, last thing with battle rap, uh, it's funny because we speak about battle and like, yo, you c- how serious it is. Sometimes I give a lot of those people credit because they be coming in their face talking about their sisters and yeah, mothers. Yeah, I, I ain't with all that. Yeah. <laughs> I can't do it. Like, battling like that, I battled in the street all the time and I probably was just as disrespectful and things like that. But this, this, like I said before, it's about fighting. Like, I can't stand there and you speak about my mother. Somebody's mm. going to die. Mm. You're not going to speak about my children. You're not, you know, like, all right, we battle, yeah, in my face and all I could probably have. But when you start mentioning the people I love, you know, I'll be killing you with tears <laughs> in my eyes like smack. this while I'm stabbing you. Yo, the, 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 what's that called, King? The Smack uh, DVD? The, yo, that, that shit would be a live show to get thirsting on that. Yeah. Nah, I'm not you with fuck, all that, what, Do you fuck with some of these battle rappers that have been around for a long time? Um, I, I'm not really too familiar with a lot of them. You know, I rocked with Pumpkinhead a lot. Yep. yep. But you know what? Uh, Rest in peace. Yeah, that was my dude. I learned a lot from Pumpkinhead, too. You know, he he showed me a lot on making these songs on the spot and things like that. But I was, a, I was always a street battler. I never was really about the battle by the time clock and by the rules and all that. You know, I'm on the corner battling 20 niggas by myself, and I'm not giving nobody a chance to rhyme because I got so many rhymes, and they all going to make you think twice about rapping back because... I'm punchline after punchline after punchline after punch. You know, you're gonna leave with a bloody nose yeah. eventually. You know. I wish I wish you had a lot of cameras around you at that time, man. Um, yeah, it was there was crazy. a couple. Was it? Maybe I'm wrong, but wasn't it DMX we spoke about last time? No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't DMX. Uh, it was Buster outside of the club when you were in the car. Mm-hmm. Then it was Jay in the elevator, just you know, to him. And then I feel like there's a couple more that you you were going at because you were all over the place. Yeah, I mean it was everybody, man. Like I used to stand outside of the tunnel club, man. That's right, that's right, that's true. And yeah. I used to just wait, you know. If I see <laughs> when I seen you, I'm like, yo, what's up? Come here, let me talk to you. Or my approach was just like, yo, you gotta battle me right now. Even supernatural, like you could ask all these people these stories. Like, you know, I approach supernatural. Yo, what's up? Let's battle right now. Stop playing with me. And he like, yo, he always tells me to this day, yo, nobody ever approached me like that, man. The way you came at me, I'm like, and you know, after that, we just, I go to his house 8 o'clock in the morning to rhyme. He'll come to my crib and hang out all day, just freestyling. The same with Juice. The Juice, the other, yep. ba- like, I go to Chicago and spend the night in Juice's house. And Juice will never let me rhyme. He rhymes nonstop, nonstop to where you can't even jump in. You know what I mean? So, mm. These are great moments that help mold me even as an artist to be around so many great artists and to always feel like you're no competition for me, you know? So it helped mold me. I've seen so many greats that I was able to learn from. I learned a lot from Juice, you know, like word perfect shit. The same with, you know, Super Nat, you know, to become character. He transforms into anyone. Holy Ghost. Last year at my event in Art Basel, Super Nat came and he was my host for the event. Mm. He turned into me on stage with the rhymes, like turned into Thurston Howell. Too. Yo, that shit was crazy, like real crazy. Mm. Mm. Listen, Internet's man, uh, it's always an honor and a pleasure when Thurston Howell the Third is the return of Thurston Howell the Third on the Premium Pete Show. Again, you want to go back and check the other one? We go really deep and dive into uh, him growing up. Uh, and, and stuff like that But it's a pleasure And honestly I'm proud to see uh, It's only like two years But it's proud to see How much has changed since then People wow. you have come across Things you have done um, And I know you're going to Continue to do more of that uh, At Thurston Howard III On Instagram right? Yeah Instagram Yep uh, Twitter You fucking with Twitter? I fuck with Twitter Thurston Howell III On Twitter uh, Victor Thurston Howell De Jesus On Facebook Check out my YouTube. I don't know if you've been in tune with my films because, you know, films is one of the biggest things I do. I don't know if you've seen my Kung Fu movie. The no, legend, I remember you saying that. Yes, yes. The I Legend it, yeah. of the Low yeah, Palm yeah. and all that, you know, where I brought the L's as a fighting style in a real Kung Fu flick. You know what I mean? But 
I'm just going hard, man. I'm staying consistent. You know, I'm in Miami base. I got the low life Miami family, the Orlando low zone family. Like we're we're working everything as one out there. You know, my Brooklyn family here, or or and all the other low life chapters around the world. You know, we pushing the culture forward, man. And and I'm not going nowhere, man. I'm mm. just here to here to represent for hip hop, man, and keep doing it. Listen, you see Thurston in the street, man. Say salutes, man. Say blessings. Don't worry. You know, he, he may look like he mean mugging you, but he a I'm a nice dude. guy, man. A Everybody dude. tell you that, man. I'm a nice guy. He a comedian too, man. You know, he, he a good dude. But listen, nothing but blessings. I'm proud. Thank you. Uh, and continue blessings. Likewise. Love, man. Make sure you check Always. for Thurston. And yeah. check it all, you know, whatever project. Check, stay First with us. Thurston Howard com. You could buy one of those 30 albums, you know, 10 different DVDs, get all the merch. No more books? The are the books uh, gone? Uh, the books are like $1,000 everywhere with resellers, <laughs> man. I might have a couple left, but they cost, man. But there are more books coming. Mm. I'm talking about other books. Check out that Low Life American Classic book by Rack Low. You know, which is a continuation of the stories of the whole polo culture and us low life. You know what I mean? So the Polo Rican, uh, the Skillionaire, Thurston Howard III, the low life general, uh, we could say rapper, entrepreneur, uh, streetwear religion, uh, uh, capo, boss, and just an all around good dude. Uh, Internet's Thurston Howard III. Make sure you check with him. Yeah. Peace. See you next episode. Peace. Cheers.